Maybe you sit around all day because you have an office job or a driving job. Maybe you're studying all day or playing video games. You have uh, back, knee or hip pain. If so, carry on watching this video and you'll see a cool little way to correct it. Hello everybody, my name is Marty. This is 30 Day Challenges, a channel all about self-improvement. On today's video, I'm gonna tell you why tight hips are bad, how you can correct them, and of course, at the end, I'll share my experience from following the program to see if it's something worthwhile to you. So this video is all about the hips, a group of muscles which are underdeveloped in males. This is because A, what are the hips, and B, how does training them make me look co cooler in, in a size medium shirt? Well, actually, if you do a lot of squats and deadlifts, the primary muscle group that should be working there are the hips. But as we are so sedentary, they're often inactive and oversurpassed by our quads and glutes. Why you want to do something about this is because the hips are designed in a way to support the weight that you're going to put on the bar and on your back and your knees are not. So if your hips are inactive, you're probably lifting from your knees, which they're not designed to handle that kind of strain. Quick little pro tip on, on squatting. Uh, as you're at the top position, imagine something's pulling your butt back and that's what's actually causing you to bend down and squat, not, not that your knees are, are what's bending. But perhaps if you don't have the flexibility, you can't even do that. So carry on watching this video. I feel someone with back pain. Uh, the cause of it might very well be your tight psoas muscle which uh, runs from your femur which is your thigh bone it runs from the top of that and it goes all the way to your spine tight psoas can cause spine compression which doesn't sound good okay so the program is my friend joe wrote a book on stretching type hips and hip flexors and as i know as i know that i personally have these i thought that's great you know i'll make this into a little challenge for myself and I'll do, do, do exercises every day for 30 days and see kind of like the outcome. So I recommend you really get the book. It's only like two pounds from Amazon, the Kindle version. The exercises are described in detail and there's a lot of like hints and tips on how you can improve them and what you should be looking for when you're stretching. As well as some very interesting outlooks on why stretching is essential. But if you are not going to buy the book, you can just find 12 hip stretches on the internet and I want you to make a table of them. Uh, well, it doesn't have to be 12, but basically make a table with those stretches on a piece of paper, like so. And then every morning when you wake up, uh, just kind of wake up and do them. For the, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to pretend that you've bought the book, but if you haven't, just pretend, follow along with your own stretches. And actually, um, something I plan to mention later on in this video, but it might be more beneficial if you go out, do some research and find 12 exercises, 12 hip stretching exercises, which are, uh, which you feel really, uh, which you feel them working on you. Uh, so that, that doesn't mean like the threshold of pain. That just means you, you feel, you feel um, the stretching happening. As everyone is different, you really get the most benefit out of getting 12 stretches, which are, are like you've tailored to your own self. I said 12 stretches, but at the start I advise in my experience, uh, I've, I've noticed that it might be too much f for someone, especially like me who, who with tight hips and probably also like you. So start off with, let's say, five stretches, but do them really well. And once you've mastered them, um, add a few more stretches in. So if you're really going to do a 30 day challenge, uh, I would advise maybe start off with five stretches and then by the end of week one, add another two, week two, add another two and so on and so on. And this is good because you're not pushing yourself too much and you're not thinking about the numbers, the quantity, but you're really focusing on the quality because that's what's going to give you long lasting results. Here are my list of tips which I've kind of written down throughout the 30 days. Following these will get you better results. So the first and foremost is to focus on the stretch uh, and nothing else, okay? I want you to set aside some time for yourself and really tell yourself, I'm just going to be stretching for this period of time. For me to do the 12 stretches, actually I was only doing 10, but it took me about half hour, okay? So bear that in mind and turn your phone off, get rid of all distractions, um, you know, do everything that's essential that you need to do before this because if you're just rushing through them, you're really not gonna get the most out of it. <laughs> so the second tip is breathe, okay? Uh, <laughs> don't go in there and tighten your breath because 
uh, by breathing, that's what actually oxygenate, oxygenates the, the, the oxygen to the muscles. I'm not making this up, <laughs> but I do not want to know the word. It's, it's breathing which is going to allow your, your muscles to kind of relax and loosen. Not holding your breath. Don't hold your breath. Next tip is to um, hold it as long as you need to. Everyone's going to be different, so the book actually advises you to follow uh, a certain amount of seconds. I would uh, advise actually to hold it until you feel your muscles have relaxed and loosened. Okay, it's, it's a very obvious moment if you're in tune with your body and uh, that way you're kind of getting the most out of it instead of just waiting for the time to pass. So I have a fairly small amount of room which I'm doing this exercise, this exercise in, but it's enough and I think so will you too, but if you're following the book, uh, the third warm-up exercise is these hip rotations and I don't have enough space to do the full circle with my knee so I noticed that instead of relaxing it was actually tightening it because I couldn't let my hips fully relax on either side so I skipped the exercise. A very important tip, a uh, very important thing to notice is to really kind of feel your body and connect with it instead of uh, performing something blindly. Uh, if you feel pain, stop, change something, work around it. You get the most out of it if if you're flexible with your program and uh, if you're tailoring it to yourself as you go instead of being strict uh, and just being like this is what I'm gonna do but at the same time don't cheat yourself and don't be like oh I'm gonna change it because you know I can't be bothered okay the square pose um, I found that pushing your knee down was did, didn't stretch me nowhere near as enough as if I bent my forward uh, bent my body forward however bending my forward uh, body forward meant that I had to arch my back, which the book advised against. So I would skip exercises, that's tip number, whatever number we're on, skip exercises which do not work for you, uh, or change them, replace them with something that does. Okay, this is another good one I found out, is that in the morning we're often in a rush to go to our job or go to school, we have commitments, uh, and unless we wake up early enough, I told you I woke up half hour early to do these stretches, but still, there was a bit of kind of rush, you know, to get somewhere on time. I found if I'm doing them at night before bed, and I've given myself enough time, I can really relax into the stretches, because I know that I'm not going anywhere, I'm just going to go to bed. So maybe if uh, think about doing them at night as well, instead of doing them in the morning. Maybe do both. Uh, the other, uh, I think doing them both would be too much for you though, because I was really kind of getting fed up. Uh, yeah, definitely make some exercises, which I'm going to talk about this later, but make some exercises which are right for you, okay? Not just some that you found randomly on the internet. Try them, and once you've found the good ones, if they're 10 or so, awesome. Another thing I found out, a little thing for you to try, once you've kind of remembered your sequence, uh, try performing it with the lights off in your room. Uh, this, I found that this like cleaned all distractions from me and uh, it really focused on my body um, and my breath and the muscles relaxing instead of looking at stuff, you know, and ultimately being distracted by it. Cool! So yeah, that's what I did. Uh, that's the program really um, and some kind of methods for you to apply that. And here are my my personal experiences in the, in the program and maybe things that will benefit you as well if you embark on this quest to have loose hips. So they're, they're in no order because I wrote them down kind of day to day. Another pro tip, maybe keep a journal so you can really um, notice the benefits. So this happened all the time, number one. This happened all the time. Uh, I felt intense heat when I was stretching my hips. Like really, really hot. Uh, I would, I would have to take my jumper off, sometimes I'd even have to take my t-shirt off and it was just crazy, like you're sweating even even though like you're not clothed at all and it's cold in the morning. So it's very interesting, um, that, that's left me a lot of kind of room to think about why that's caused it. I think a possible explanation I might have, a theory, if you, if you may, if I may. As I've unblocked the energy at my hips which was tight, it's allowed the energy to flow uh, through my body much more easier and that's why I felt so much hotter. A little side note to add to that is that because um, I got hot, so hot in the morning, I had to open my windows, which was nice because I got some fresh air coming in and it really like woke me up to the day. 
my second point that I've noticed is <laughs> I've, I've written down is that uh, my hips feel looser. I've been waking up nicer. <laughs> I've been uh, my poops have been nice and easy. My morning poops. So the stretches that I picked uh, actually alternate in difficulty <laughs> and uh, enjoyment. This is something I really uh, enjoy talking about is how morning stretches wake you up to the day and get you going. <laughs> I'm not a very uh, morning person and uh, contrary to my uh, housemates who are in the morning, oh how are you and stuff like that, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm really in my own world and I don't want to talk about it, I'm quite grumpy. So doing these morning stretches uh, woke me up so once I left my room and started interacting with the world I was myself and fully woken up. Um, a little side thing to add to that is that I also felt it eat, um, aid my digestion so if I had a big meal before bed in the, in the morning uh, my food is indigested so performing those stretches I felt you know my stomach churning and, and getting stuff done down there. <laughs> so another thing I noticed that I was doing a really long session editing. I felt tightness in my hips, so I got up and I moved around a little bit, stretched them a little bit, which was nice because I really I realized that having a newfound awareness to that part of my body meant that once I experience pain, I can deal with it straight away instead of letting it pile up. So I even started enjoying it. Woo! <laughs> I've written that I've had, uh, I've been sleeping really well as well, following them. It's not bad, you might want to sleep well. I've noticed that my abs also have been looking great. A very strange thing I've noticed is also that uh, basically my left foot is flatter than my right foot and I've been to a chiropractor about this and he told me this so I assume he's right and then I actually checked my feet and yeah, the left foot is flatter than the other but after doing these stretches, random side effect, my left foot is no longer flatter than my right foot. I, I look, I could see the difference before and now I can't at least. And here is now my before and after video comparison so you guys can see the results instead of just listening to me talk about it. So lying leg extension thing, you can see definitely a lot more give. Um, I think that's really cool. Uh, I mean, I was expecting those results, but seeing it with my own eyes, it's different. So maybe, I, maybe you should do a video a before and after video for yourself as well. So uh, the second little thing I did was the knee to like hug your knees. Um, and that's been a tough one for me for a long time, actually. And Although it really looks the same, I feel as if it was easier. In fact, it looks a little bit worse, but I feel that it was easier for me to hold those uh, while keeping my butt down to the ground. So, this position, it looks around about the same. And I really didn't um, think of a good way to measure it when I was doing it. But I would say that it was, it was probably easier for me to hold and I could hold it for longer. <laughs> And this one is just boom, right in your face. You can clearly see the difference of how much straighter my spine is at my lowest point in my squat. Read it and weep, non-believers. <laughs> All right, to conclude, I just want to mention how um, this is just one way for you to re uh, relax your hips. And I definitely recommend you to find your own exercises. If this is something which you really want to do, then, and you know you should because of a certain pain that you have in your body, then commit to it and really um, plan it right, okay? So find those exercises which you, you love doing and which you can keep doing. And once you've you know, done the program, don't just stop there. Make, it, make a program that you can keep for years, not just for uh, 30 days, because already a week after I've um, stopped doing the program, I've already, I already feel my, my hips are a lot tighter. And as it's so beneficial for you to kind of wake up and do stretches in the morning, yeah, really, just make it your own. Follow it, take some videos so you can compare and kind of journal about it as well. All right, so I got a blog as well now. If you haven't got enough of me from these videos, links in the description. Uh, the next challenge which I'm doing is a very interesting one. It's, it's a challenge to show how we're all one, you know, we're all one people and we're all connected. I'm going to befriend a stranger every day for 30 days and see how I feel. So see you in a month.
Thank you for watching. Adios.